I'm so glad that in this church we choose to honor America, not only on the special days, but I think every day. I'm so grateful for that opportunity. I'm very grateful for these men who have um, blown the flags and the branches of service today. I want us to thank you for being with us.
sands on the seashore. Who can count that? Who can even begin to measure that? And yet, when the famine came, we'll notice in the 47th chapter of Genesis that, that uh, Joseph, instead of giving back the grain to the people, he sold it to the people. You know, that's the way governments always do. Uh, you know, I, I get so tickled when I hear folks around uh, April the 15th every year say, well, I'm getting money back. Like it's some kind of a, of a gift from somebody. Don't you realize that's your money? And you're just getting back a minute part of what you sent in. And yet, even though the people were responsible for growing all of that grain and cooperating with the Egyptian government, with Joseph, in giving a portion of that so that it could be stored up, we find that he sold it back. Well, after about three years, according to the biblical record, uh, they ran out of money in Egypt. And so on the fourth year, they came to Joseph and said, we don't have any money. And we're hungry again. And do you see the, the cycle of dependency that is beginning to set in in Egypt? They're looking not to the Creator to provide for them. Now they're looking to their government to provide for them. And it's Joseph. The Pharaoh didn't set this policy. He told Joseph to do whatever's good in your sight. And he instructed the people, you do whatever Joseph tells you to do. So for the fourth year, they got grain for giving him their animals, the cattle, the horses, everything that was necessary for them to be able to produce future crops, they gave away. You know, in, in today's vernacular, that means uh, we'd give up, give up our tractors and uh, all of our car implements, and that would give us food for another year. Well, the next year they came back and said, well, we don't have any money. We don't have any cattle. Uh, all we have is our land. And Joseph said, well, give us your land and you can have food for another year. They gave their land. In the last year, they came to him and said, we don't have any land. We don't have any animals. We don't have any money. We're still hungry. Joseph said, well, you all move to the cities. He moved everybody to the cities. And he said, uh, you serve Pharaoh and I'll give you grain. And he established a policy of sharecropping, basically, whereby the people were then allowed to farm the land that they no longer owned. And they gave Pharaoh 20% of what they would produce uh, for all the years out, and they kept 80%. And you know what the people said? Hooray for Joseph! You have saved us! And he had brought them into servitude. I want to tell you something. From that point in history until now, we have seen evil, despotic people, leaders, either fabricate or take advantage of some awful crisis to enslave their people. The Jews had it done to them at least three times. At least three times. And, and the, the first time it happened was in Egypt because if you read the record carefully, there were two classes of people, actually three classes of people, who were allowed to keep land. Obviously the political class, Pharaoh and all of his servants, they kept their land. The religious class, the priests kept their land, and, and uh, the Jews. They settled out in the land of Goshen, away from everybody else, out of sight, out of mind, and the scripture says that there they settled in the land and gave 